What's going on everyone, it's Mr West, I hope you're all well. So welcome to the last part in my Poco F1 camera and video test series. And this time we're concentrating on the camera UI and how that works and how that behaves in real time. So as you can see, we've got a real time point of view look at the actual camera UI and I'll walk you through all of the modes and also show you some examples of the autofocus and also the portrait selfie mode and also the panorama as well. So as you can see, it's quite a simplistic camera mode. It's very much like the Xiaomi handsets. And I'll walk you through all of the functions in a moment. So starting at the top left-hand corner, then we've got this option here. So we've got this straighten option, uh, which allows you to obviously straighten the photos once you've finished taking them. We've got the tilt shift here, which obviously allows you to compensate for uh, any tilts in the photos. So you can then got Google Lens, which allows you to point the camera at an object, and then Google will look into the cloud and find the best search result for that. We've then got the timer, so this is great for portrait shots. We've got the beautify option. Now I tend not to use this too much because it tends to over smooth skin. And then we've got the settings at the bottom, which I'll show you in a moment. And then we've got the group selfie option as well, which is great for capturing lots of people in one photo. So with the settings, uh, we've got the save location info switched on at the moment, so that gathers data from the cloud and then puts a stamp on your photo so you can actually see where it was taken. They've got the camera sounds on or off. We've got pocket mode, which locks the touch gestures when placed in a pocket, so that stops the camera from being accidentally activated when it's in your jeans or your trousers. They've got save the previous mode, which uh, allows you to switch camera to the previously used mode when you open the app. Add a timestamp to the photos. They've got dual watermark, which adds the shot on Poco F1 to the bottom left-hand corner of the image. I prefer to keep that off because I find it quite distracting. They've got the grid lines. That helps you to keep a straight on your horizon line. Focus and shoot. So basically, you tap the focus, then tap again to take a photo. They've got an option to scan QR codes. So that speaks for itself. Allows you to use the camera to scan those QR codes, and then that opens an app or takes you to a web page or whatever. Uh, save original photos as well. Not sure what that means. Press and hold the shut button. So we've got a number of options here. We've got burst, shoot, and focus. Mirror the front camera. So basically what that means is sometimes, I'm not sure if you've seen with some phones, uh, when you take a front, uh, so, so they've got mirror front camera. So if you're not sure what that means, sometimes when you take a photo with a phone, it actually mirrors the actual look. So you look a bit strange, like as if you were looking in a mirror, but that allows you to switch that off and gives you a true representation of what the camera actually took. Then got the camera frame option, so we have 4x3 or 16x9. Then got picture quality, so instead of having resolution options, we've got high, standard or low, so obviously just keep that in high mode. You can drop that down a bit if you want to save yourself some memory in your phone. And then got fingerprint shutter, that's extremely handy because it allows you to use the fingerprint scanner when taking a selfie and allows you to focus on your image a bit better. Then got the volume buttons function, which is shutter, zoom or volume anti-banding mode which is 50, 60 or auto or off. Then got exposure settings which is currently set to center weighted but you can use the frame average or spot metering. Then got options for contrast, saturation and sharpness so you've got lowest, lower, low, normal, high, higher and highest and the same option then for saturation and sharpness. And at the bottom there as well we've got restore the default settings. So down below the settings option, we've then got this uh, selection of three circles here. Now these are scene modes, so you can see just on the side of the screen here. So we'll start at the bottom, we've got normal, and we've got vivid, we've got film, amour, latte, sun, cookie, calm, soda, and gourmet. And you can you just see the subtle changes in the images there. Uh, these are pretty good filters and what I will do is I will include a selection of all of these in the gallery at the end. I will actually put these in a folder in Google Photos. I'll link that in the description. You can then go look at that at your own leisure and save the photos or look at them in more scrutiny. So then below the scene selection option, we've got the AI toggle. So AI is now off and then we've got AI on. Basically what happens is when you actually point the viewfinder at an object, the AI will actually look and see what the actual image is and then accordingly adjust the settings for that. So then we've got the HDR option and now it's currently set to auto you can toggle that to off or on. I usually just leave this set to auto in daylight but when it starts to get a little bit darker in the evening I would actually set that to off so it actually allows you to see more detail in the shadows because putting that to auto actually darkens the shadows I find with this particular handset in slightly darker scenes. Then got control over the flash so obviously flash auto, flash on, or you can use actually the flash as a torch. Then over on the right hand side, we've got a carousel. 
So if we start at the top, so we've got controls for manual. So this allows you full control over the actual uh, camera lens itself. So you can, you've got the manual focus option here. Now, one thing I'm not particularly fond of here is that the actual carousel for the focus actually stretches beyond the actual screen itself. So rather than using just a lever, which actually just fills up the top to bottom of the display, you've got this kind of long option here, which although it's got lots of steps and allows you to have like a lot of control over the focus, it is a little bit finicky, uh, especially when you're having to scroll across the screen there. You've also got control over the shutter speed, control over ISO, and you've also got control over your white balance as well, which is cool. Okay, so the takes it in portrait mode and apologies if the screen is going to skew if now but it is what it is so we'll just do a panorama and again this will be included in the photos in the google folder okay so we'll just keep as steady as possible just being sure to keep everything in the grid line there and we're almost done so underneath that, we've then got the square option. So this is great for social posts, for example, like Instagram. We've then got the portrait shot. So this is great for uh, getting that background blur. And I have concluded some shots that I've taken of myself. Uh, you can see, if you just look to the outer edges of the frame there, it is a little bit blurry until the middle of the frame. So it's a little bit finicky. So we'll try and recreate this uh, with this large bush over here. Okay, so it says to keep around 2.5 meters away. Now uh, we'll just take a snap of that there. And we can see you've got a nice soft bokeh in the background. The edge detection isn't actually too bad. You can see just at the tops of the bush there and also onto the left hand side, uh, to your left hand side, it has gone a little bit soft, but not too bad. Then we've got the standard photo option, which we've already looked at. We've got control over video. Now in the menu for video, we've got a slightly different selection. So the top is the same, but if you just look a bit further down, you've got image stabilization off or on. Then we've got control over video quality, which is UHD, Full HD at 1080p or HD 720p. Then got H.264 or H.265 high performance video encoding. Now, I usually leave that to H.264 because it's more compatible with most video editors, but if you've got something like Final Cut, then that will actually recognize H.265. Then got high frame rate video options here. So we've got 720p at 120 FPS, 1080p at 120 FPS, 720 at 240 FPS or 1080. Then got the focus mode, which is continuous auto focus, or you can use tap on the screen to focus. Then got a time lapse interval for video, so we've got an incredible amount of options there, and you can basically go up to a full 60 second interval for each time lapse for each longer video. Then got you can use the fingerprint shutter again for this option. We've got the volume function, volume buttons function, which is shutter, zoom, or volume, anti-banding again, 50 to 60 hertz, auto or off. Auto exposure settings, which are currently set to center weighted, but you can have frame average or spot metering. And finally, then you've got an option to restore everything to default. And at the bottom of the screen here, then we've got an option for a short video, which you can just see the small timer just going around there. And that allows you to take a very quick video, around about 10 seconds, and you can use that to send to your friends for silly happenings which have occurred on nights out or something okay so let's show you the camera mode and we've got the AI switched on you can see just off to the left hand side here and you can see currently it's looking at some bushes and you can see the little icon has changed to a picture of a leaf if I point at the sky you can see it then changes to a cloud and similarly if I point at the grass it just turns to a leaf so it's very high level if you like in what it wants to term it but it's pretty fast as well at the same time and it does sometimes oversaturate colors but it all depends on personal preference okay so let's show you how the autofocus works so we've got some nice berries here now because there's lots of leaves around here you can see that the ai is just stuck on the picture of a leaf so we'll just move away and 
you can see the focus is very very quick and it keeps a good lock around those as well so let's see how close we can actually get to these so that's pretty much the infinity of the camera lens there it's getting a little bit confused because of so much going on so we'll get a picture of that or something a bit larger like this leaf here so you can see that I think that the, I mean, this is not as green as the camera if you find it is making out. Quite oversaturated. If I switch the AI off, it doesn't actually make things any better, but you can cure that in the camera settings if needed by dialing back the saturation or do that in post-processing if needed. As you can see here, we've got a nice natural bokeh for I'm image, which I think looks really nice. Much better than the portrait options Okay, so we've got some more static objects here. So again, we can just see the focus there if we just move away and back again. And again, you see it just gets a good focus lock on everything. It's just so quick. Very good considering the price point of this phone. It's very, very capable camera hardware, which I think does need a little bit of work just to have some fine tuning. You can see, I think that, you know, these images are pumped up to oversaturated point but I still think the images do look nice anyway so we can get a so that is good focus on that very very close lots of detail in this small part here which is cool if we go into manual mode and we can show the auto fo the manual focus sorry so that is auto and then we've got just allows you to fine-tune that focus to get as much detail out of that image as possible and we will just take a picture over there look just to see how it captures it seems we've got a bit of ripple on the cloud there so good job picking up some shadows on these clouds as well okay an exposure straight into the sun the AI hasn't actually picked up anything you can just see it just says AI And that is that and we'll also show you the front facing camera as well and we'll show you the portrait mode live so you can see how much blur is happening around the screen here it's very difficult sometimes to kind of get yourself in the shot correctly so just hold it with one hand here look into the lens not on the screen And there we go, cheesy chappy. So that is the camera UI for the Poco F1. Not absolutely loaded with features, but also not skimping on the features either. There's plenty here for pretty much anyone to be able to take a good photo with this phone. And again, like I said, the camera software does need a little bit of work. On saying that, this is first release. And I'm sure there'll be more Pogo phones to come in the future. This is sold uh, from, talking to Gavin's Gadgets, around about 28 million units. That is insane. So the last thing I want to do is just show you the zoom. Now there's no optical zoom, there's no two times button, but you can pinch to zoom and you can actually zoom in on the subject. Now with this is a digital zoom, so you are going to have noise creeping in and also cropping. So you can just pinch on the display there. So that again isn't too bad, so that's 2.8 times zoom. Now without any optical image stabilization, it's quite difficult to keep everything steady. So we're all the way up to eight times zoom. There's a horse over here somewhere. There he is. So again, keep everything steady as possible. You can see these results aren't great but if needs must the option is there so let's zoom right out again it's a little bit slow a little bit of lag on the screen there but that is the poco f1 camera ui demonstration just to show you how it all works and how quick it is at taking photos and how capable it is i think the camera is good it does need a little bit of work i think However, this is first release. This has only been out around about a month, just less than that. And there's plenty of time to 
get this polished up and get that camera software really singing. I really wish they would add some stabilization to the further up video modes and add 1080p 60. 4K 60, not a huge desirable, however, it'd be great if they had that. But again, I do think this is a great phone with a more than decent enough camera to capture good shots in pretty much any daylight situation. Low lights, maybe not so much. You can use the pro settings in order to get a better photo, but then that requires a tripod and it requires you to know all about the modes at the same time. But, you know, just looking at that, you get a good quality image. And again, all of these will be included in the Google Photos folder in the description so you can take a look in your own time. So that is it for the camera UI walkthrough. If you have any questions, Please leave those in the comments. I will do my very best to get back to you as soon as possible. But for now, thank you very much for watching, guys. My name is Mr. West, and I'll catch you guys later.